Hey, welcome to another episode of Tell Me How You're Mighty. Today, we're gonna to talk about devaluing. I put the question out to Chump Nation, um, what did they do for Schmoopy and did not do for you? And I thought of this as a topic idea because somebody posted a comment um, that said, um, my fuckwit bought his affair partner's daughter a puppy, an $800 puppy. Meanwhile, our family dog was dying and had to be put down. Oh, Sarah, <laughs> your oh, thoughts. That I is know. shocking. Yeah. That is horrible. But it, again, it sort of highlights the whole shiny new versus old and a bit bored with that. You know, the same applies to dogs as to... Yeah. As dogs, really, clearly. The dog is lost to shiny, right? He's close yeah, to death, puppy, so... uh, it, it's it's easier to get enthusiastic about a puppy, isn't it? Until of course you have to clear up after them or do any of the adult work involved in training a young dog. But you know, the shiny new puppy, and I can see I can see why that would be that and, would and be he's... and along with shiny new affair partner. Yeah, yeah he's a great a guy. Good... Yeah, he's not dad. He's not mommy's married boyfriend because he she's. This is an affair partner, so uh, presumably dad's still married. So, but what wins people over than a new puppy, an eight hundred dollar puppy? I mean, talk about the impression management. Woo, yeah. So it, uh, it, it kind of uh, yeah. You, it, it, these these people do manage to leave you speechless over and over and over again. So um, yeah, it's, it's, okay. It's, it's, it, but there's no surprises there, to be honest. All right. Well, we, we've got some people left us voice messages, and then uh, we're going to have some of the uh, submissions read. So here's the first one. Hi, Chump Lady. You asked what the fuckwit does for Schmoopy that he didn't do for me. He used to walk ahead of me and not hold hands with me while we were walking. But he is walking and holding hands with Schmoopy. How do I know? Well, I wasn't pain shopping. It's actually on video, video shot by my private investigator, which is now part of the evidence I will present at court. Have a great day. But did he hold hands with her at the initial stages of the relationship? You know, obviously, I, I obviously, know. further down the line, then he might be walking ahead of her. And but maybe the hand holding with the new woman is no longer. Maybe that's just part of the initial. Love well, bomb, you know, who yeah, knows? Right, the love bombing. But I think that's what stings is that, you know, you ask them to do something, you want to be shown that kind of affection, and then it really, it's a real sucker punch when you see that they, oh, they, it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. I mean, it's that this guy's capable of holding hands and being romantic and making that gesture, but just not with her. But um, But I guess she'll have the last laugh because it will be part of their divorce evidence that was caught on camera with the private investigator. That will show him for holding hands, won't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, that will like, show him ooh. the error of his ways. Oof. Should have stuck to his not holding hands policy, <laughs> and then he might not be so easily identified as someone having an affair. Yes, hold the divorce summons. Grip that. <laughs> okay, our next one. One thing that the ex-husband number two did for Schmoopy that he never did for me was the first Christmas. I will never forget this. Our first Christmas for my present, he was so excited to give me his Christmas present to me was a mouse pad with a wrist lift and a set of computer speakers. Keep in mind that he used the computer 99% of the time more than me. So he gave it to me two weeks before Christmas. He was, quote, so excited. And I just looked at him like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, no. Uh-huh. So he could tell I didn't like the present, got pissed off. He's like, well, fine then. I'll just return it. I just thought you would want that. And I said, uh, no. And so he ended up keeping the presents. And I ended up getting nothing. Fast forward 13 years later, we are divorced and he makes it a point to 
tell my friend that he happened to run into at Academy Sports that he was buying her a $50 Columbia jacket, pink, because it's her favorite color. And she's always cold, as cold as his heart. Okay, so I have something. I, I This whole phenomenon of fuckwits buying gifts, and we just did the hysterical. Well, we had, to, I'm still not quite over the um, the extra large American flag. <laughs> the thing. company. You know, that, that the company. 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 I'm, still, I'm still, <laughs> still not over that, and I still quite fancy one of those myself. But you know. <laughs> It can be arranged. <laughs> if you're going to do, if you're going to buy any clothing, it's going to be in the wrong size or a, a size that causes upset without a shadow of a doubt. I know that that was that's going to be a classic. That one's going to be going down. Yeah. But but this whole idea of of buying presents for someone that you actually are presents for you, and you try to it's a kind of gaslighting, right? It's like of course she wanted those computer speakers and mouse pad, and she's like, I don't use the computer like you use the computer, you know. So it's clearly a gift for himself. And then of course he has to turn around and make her seem ungrateful for his generosity, and so she gets nothing. <laughs> What's worse than buying a gift that's clearly for yourself or buying some completely inappropriate and <laughs> like the man that brought back rocks for his children or bits from the pebbles from the beach? You know, which is worst? I, oh, God, it's hard to challenge worse. I, they're both terrible. I, can I say both? I, they're, yeah. they're, both they're both bad. I, I think buying a gift for yourself is worse. I think, yeah. you know, that just the audacity of that cheek of it is is quite, quite stunning, really. Yeah, I, it's either... It's either truly narcissistic and that the other person is an extension of you. So you assume that they would want the stereo speakers because because they're not an autonomous person. They're just part of you. You want the speakers, ergo they want the speakers. I mean, it could be, I, I, I can't pretend to untangle the skein. I don't know their pathology, but that could be one explanation for it. Or the other explanation for it is they're just greedy little bastards and they, they just want all the shiny things and nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> when I discovered that my husband was in the midst of an affair, um, I discovered it via a, a, a WhatsApp message, and he was making all kinds of promises. And one of the promises that he he made, which will stick in my head forever, was that they would spend a lifetime spooning on the sofa. Oh! Um, but in between the spooning, he was going to be cooking her elaborate meals and looking after her. <laughs> Um, and I'm just wondering, and he never did any looking after. If he cooked elaborate meals, it would be ma- largely consist of making a mess in the kitchen and leaving everyone else to clear up and going on and on and on about the only elaborate meal he ever made was spaghetti bolognese. And he became very competitive <laughs> about that. And his spaghetti bolognese was always the best. But during the making of the spaghetti bolognese, which is actually quite a simple thing, he would make yeah. so much mess in the kitchen. So you just think, please do not cook. <laughs> because you're going to make a mess. It's going to be a, you're going to make a menace of yourself in the kitchen. Stop it! I'd rather you just didn't cook. I'll do it. But I'm just wondering whether this they've that. now been together for quite some time. I wonder whether the the meal cooking did ever happen, or whether sometimes the things that he says he's going to do for the other person they start off with good intentions, but in the long run, you end up with the same shoddy non hand holder that you know, left off and started started well, but ended up not, not, not quite so well. Yeah, well, look, I mean, that sounds like his MO, right? He He's a future faker and a promise maker, and and eventually the promises peter out. But, I mean, he had to uh, salt the mines. He had to have some kind of bait on his hook. So I'll spoon you and make you spaghetti bolognese, I guess, was his charm offense. It's, it's an interesting combination of, of promises, really. <laughs> But I, I, she, she won the prize, yeah. Have it, we got any other examples then of things that they did for for others that they wouldn't do for you? Yes. Okay. The next one is... Fuckwit refuses to pay toward our children's therapy. He's thousands behind on child support, but he pays for a fair partner's daughter's online school, despite the fact that she has two parents of her own. So... I, I know that this isn't the case in your co-parenting with a fuckwit issue, but this whole thing of where they will, it's kind of like the puppy, like they'll invest in the the child of the affair partner or the new family, but the old family is shabby and, you know, forget them. Like they don't have needs anymore, I guess. And it's, this is just sad. Well, it's just that the new child is more useful. That's yeah. what it is. It's nothing to do with the child themselves. 
because these people, they always use these people as a way of, of enhancing their own life. Good and at the point. moment, it's more useful for him to pay for the child of the affair partner because he's invested in getting what he can out of the affair partner. He doesn't want to pay for his own children because, you know, they're, they're not as useful. That's that's all it comes down to. And I would I would bet, too, that a affair partner's kid's probably going to need therapy, too. So and I'm sure he won't pay for it when that time comes. Um, yeah. Boo. Matching tattoos. Your oh. thoughts on matching tattoos, Sarah? Oh, well, I've told you my own part, my own ex's tattoo yes, story. The Cornish I believe, that he, tattoo. I believe that he had a matching tattoo with with her because he went off and he he arrived with this with this mysterious writing etched down his arm, and he and he said, "It's Cornish. You won't know what that is." And he was ever confused with himself. And I said, "Morally bankrupt. Fuck with it. That's what that says." <laughs> And I'm very aware. I'm, and that, this tattoo has now gone green because I believe it was done. On, on the <laughs> so I think, you know, again, matching tattoos is it might be upsetting that your ex has gone off and had a matching tattoo with someone else. But really just be thankful that you escaped the matching tattoo experience. And gangrene really, from a bad would tattoo. You really, really want to, to have a matching tattoo with such an individual. Would you want to be permanently matched to someone with su- such low morals? The answer is no. No, that, you raise a good point. I mean, what if the person who wrote it had gotten the matching tattoo only to find out that her husband or partner was a fuckwit and then she's in, then she has to do what? She has to either have it erased or put something over it. I mean, you're stuck with that horrible reminder that you got a matching tattoo with a fuckwit. It's a commitment. It's a commitment and you don't wish to, you know, with that, with that level of, actually, that's quite surprising that any of these people would have matching tattoos with anyone, oh. you know. Yeah, because that is a commitment. You'll start with that forever. But, but see, then you think about that in the in the heat of the moment. That that's <laughs> that's the illusion, right? You think I'm going to tattoo them; they're mine. That that they won't stray. They're literally branded. You know, we have each other's names or whatever it is. And case after case, no, it, it makes absolutely no difference. I mean, the famous one is Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott or something. Apparently, he had right above his penis. He had a tattoo of her name, Tori. So it's sad. That's what the tabloid said. And of course, he's an infamous serial cheater and they're now divorced. Um, yeah, the matching tattoos, it, it doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. Okay, our next one. He took her to the Bahamas, a place I had always wanted to visit, but of course, bought her a new SUV, grocery shopped, cleaned, did yard work, and more stuff, private chefs, gifts, Concerts, assorted trips, clothes, jewelry. All that stuff could make me writhe at first, but no longer. Wretched, life-ruining treatment isn't better against a backdrop of shiny things. I got freedom, much happier and healthier kids, and the home that I love. It will never stop being glorious not to live in constant fear of the next fit of unaccountable rage. It will never stop feeling like a gift to wake up each morning and find myself in a life free of all that. I this one, yeah, I get it. Like the shiny things, it can it can hurt that you've been devalued quite literally and materially, but the peace and the freedom of getting one of these freaks out of your life is priceless. The things are just irrelevant. They mean nothing when it comes down to it. We did at work the other day, we were we were looking at the rich list, which had just been published. And these Ooh. people that were multi, multi billionaires that just had endless money. And and, and there's a part of you that, oh, I love all that. But ultimately, the best thing in life is, is freedom and peace and the ability to do your own thing. And it doesn't matter what you've got or what people buy you. If you're in a relationship where you're being devalued and discarded and not treated properly, none of it means anything. And yeah. ultimately, half the time, the stuff they buy you is for their own benefit whatsoever. You know, if clothing that they like to see you wear, little areas of, of trying to, you know, of, of tickets for events that they want to go to. Like we had the computer mouse for the computer yes. that they've got. Speakers, it, right. It, it, it's all meaningless. It's, it's meaningless. Although, you know, fabulous vacations and private chefs, that would be nice, but... But yes, I mean, not, 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 if you, not, not, you have, not if you have to take that, some annoying individual along with you. I'd rather just be oh, on my own 
Or if you're or if you're frightened of them. I mean, the constant stress of worrying that someone's going to fly into a rage or that there's trip wires everywhere and you're going to set one off. Yeah, nothing is worth living like that. Absolutely nothing. And but I, I think a lot of people as chumps, I think they get very hung up on. Um, well, I mean, rightly so, the terror of losing a certain amount of financial stability and comfort. And then also if your values, maybe your values need adjusting. And maybe if you are somebody who is a bit materialistic, maybe being chumped or something makes you re recalibrate your thinking about those things and, and what really matters. Because nothing, as, as we both said, nothing is worth living like this. He actually told me in a super caring voice about his affair partner's fear that she might get hurt because he was married. He didn't want to hurt her. Yet he had 100% zero concern about or even recognition of hurting me, married for 28 years and mother of his children. About my feelings, he was a stone. Could not reach him, eyes of steel. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, it's the lack of, so, it's the lack of self-awareness that is, is just quite staggering in all of this. You know, the, the fact that he didn't want to hurt somebody who he was engaged in a relationship that would hurt his partner. Yeah. Know. She says they were married for 28 years and she's the mother of his children. And her feelings are like irrelevant. But then to actually say it to her as well, to say that he was, you know, she was worried about him hurting her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, no, that's, that is so not original. I mean, and, and also there's these bogus therapists out there that, that say this in reconciliation that people, they have to grieve their affair partner, Sarah, and you need to be understanding that they're grieving and that this is very difficult for them. And of course, it's difficult for Schmoopy too. You know, she's hurt. She's hurt that he's married. And um, yeah, there may be emotions. The most simple thing, say, I love you something I was told repeatedly through my 13 years as not the way she shows affection. She says she was more of an action rather than a words type, as her family never said those words. I must have heard them maybe 10 times through our relationship and just accepted that was normal. So this whole idea that, that she would say, I love you to, to the other man, but not to him, or not very often, I thought that one really hurts. I think it's funny as well that she says actions speak louder than words and ultimately by her actions she shows exactly what she was like and how she was feeling really. Yeah, I mean really what does her I love you mean anyway to <laughs> to the affair partner or to him? She's she's a cheater and she's shallow, so it's yeah. I I know, but still ouch, 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 ouch. Oh. Babies and children come into this quite a lot. Yeah, okay, so our next one. Vacations, house with a pool, more babies. I don't want any more kids, but we did have a scare shortly before he left, and he said, abort or I'll unalive myself. He also said he'd pick me if I had my tubes tied, but then left for good a week after I did it. Quit paying child support for our kids, but now pays private school tuition for their two at 25 k a year per kid. This one, I don't even know how he's still alive. I mean, the injustice of this, I think, would drive me just insane. I mean, the fact that he owes her thousands of dollars in unpaid child support, and but has a new shiny family with, with um, the mistress now wife. And he's willing to to pay for private school tuition and, and all manner of things for that family. Wow. Just wow. Front bencher in hell, I think. Back waxing, according to the kids, and stomach waxing from a man who literally waxed his back three times in 15 years for me. The, the back waxing one, um, again, it's an image I don't really want to, to conjure up. Um, this is this is back waxing and stomach waxing. I didn't even know that was actually that's a thing, a, a thing. Um, and this man had never been involved in any kind of back waxing activities or very limited back waxing, but was prepared to do this for the new partner. My feeling is she can have his shiny little seal-like body, like yuck, yuck. <laughs> You know, she can, 
shave off the little tufts of his back hair or have him waxed and polished. Yuck. Okay, yuck. I mean, I get it that it would have been nice if you'd had a less hairy partner, but mm, no, that's just kind of, look, you, you lost a gorilla. Yeah. He's welcomed him in all his new, smooth, magnificent. <laughs> Let's him get on with it and now I get on with it. She got him a Christmas present and nothing for me. I'm more on the giving side anyways, but it would have been nice to have some effort reciprocated. AP was also a co-worker, and they just so happened to be matched with Secret Santa. Okay, I like that <laughs> that this gift giving was tied up as Secret Santas. Like, she just happens to get a gift, or he gets a gift because, oh, they're Secret Santas. That's why, you know, he gets, I, I don't even understand how that explains how he gets nothing for Christmas. But the, the office Secret Santa, who is her, the affair partner, gets something. Wow. Again, is it better to get nothing than some of the shoddy offerings that we talked about in a previous episode? You know, gift giving again, it's an area that there is never, they're never going to excel. Never. Yeah. I mean, and you kind of, I think the thing with gift giving and why, why it really touches a nerve is because it's a tangible thing. You can't spackle away that kind of devaluing. When you don't get a present or you get a really shitty present on an occasion that necessitates you are supposed to acknowledge your partner, celebrate your partner, be happy that you have this lovely intact family, Christmas, holidays, high occasions, that the absence of it is like, it's a real slap, right? You can't ignore it. You can't ignore that this person is being terrible. The next one's interesting as well. And this is where, um, again, it's a theme here is that um, child support and paying for your kids and valuing your kids doesn't necessarily follow through once you've left the your your partner, uh, despite the fact that often people will say, I'm not leaving the children, I'm just leaving you. He is her sugar daddy. He buys her everything she wants. She even made a wish list on TikTok of designer purses shoes, and trips he was required to buy her, and he did. He buys her roses for no reason, takes her on shopping sprees to Rodeo Drive. She says jump, and he says how high. Meanwhile, I'm over here getting $200 a month in child support from him for our two kids. You know, what sort of person does that, that they don't prioritize their own children? I, I'm like, you got to get an attorney lady. I mean, child support enforcement court, you need financial discovery. I mean, if this guy can afford to be a sugar daddy and, you know, maybe it's just all credit cards and smoke and mirrors. Nonetheless, the fact that he would outlay that kind of expenditures when he owes you money and he pays less than baseline child support, $200 a month. I mean, that is piss poor. And I got less than baseline child support. So I know from shitty child support, that's like the guy's unemployed or he's a dishwasher or something to pay that little in child support. I don't know what state you're in. Still, that, like, get on that. Talk to an attorney. That's wrong. All kinds of wrong. The weeks prior to D-Day, he became a gym rat. I've worked out since I was 20. I run marathons and weight train three days a week. He would never come with me. Slept in when I got up early. Never prioritized health. Unfortunately, he is the worst type of gym rat. He announced the separation via social media with a shirtless photo of his 48-year-old abs and regularly posts horrendous photos of his biceps with captions like, On Friday, we do arms. Totally embarrassing and helps me get over him. But I am pretty annoyed that I got a couch potato for 23 years and then he starts working out. I, I mean... <laughs> I have to say, I totally oh, can. Right, I, we do, we do arms, right? I can totally see the social media douchebag that this guy is. Like, like we all care about your biceps, sir. Yes, I mean, uh, okay. She got the couch potato, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think then. I don't think this guy's improved really. And look, like you were saying before about the gifts, you know, they they just need this to lure. You know, he needs his fit body to lure the next one. And then I'm sure he'll go right back to couch potato. He won't last. No, he yeah. will be back couch potato ways. He let her paint his toenails blue. 
Now, this is, uh, this is, again, why would you want to paint someone's uh, toenails blue? What was going on? Here? This is an interesting <laughs> admission. Well, I think I think it's that it's a, it to me it says a certain connotes a certain amount of vulnerability, like oh, you're going you big masculine man, you're gonna like do something whimsical and you know paint your toenails and and they're gonna be blue, they're gonna be a daring color, and you would never take these kind of risks or let me be playful like that, but you'll be playful with the mistress. Like, uh, I don't know. It's it's a superficial thing, right? It's an easy thing. Look at it this way. If you're trying to impress a schmoopy, what's a jar of nail polish, right? It costs him nothing, nothing to sit there and give her big smelly feet and let her paint his toenails. Made a nice dinner for her. In 38 years, he never made dinner for me. Sounds like such a minor thing, but it stung. 38 years he never made dinner that is staggering no spaghetti bolognese even not even <laughs> nothing not even dinner with the great big song and dance of creating loads of washing up and showing off about how the how you made dinner never making dinner in 38 years i mean that is quite some achievement uh, yeah kind of want him to starve to death or have a life of tv dinners or something i, I mean again it's this whole it's not that they it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. It's not that this man was congenitally incapable of making a dinner, <laughs> you know. It's that he would not, that he had a nice wife appliance and he was perfectly content to let her do all the cooking and I bet cleaning too. Um, but then when he has to or when he has to make an effort or he feels like, you know, there's an effort worth making, suddenly the man knows how to cook or I don't know, plop something out of a can or a frozen pouch. He can make an effort. Yeah. I hope I hope she takes herself out to dinner. I hope there's people in her life who cook her dinner. I, I really hope that I, nice. there will be someone that will make her dinner, I'm sure. Had a baby. When I met my ex, and to be fair to him, he did say he never wanted children and never would. I'm in my early 30s, and I said... To him, what about children? I'd like to be a mom. Well, you'd think I'd started World War III. He screamed and screamed, saying, you know how I feel, and the immortal line, quote, if you get yourself pregnant, I will leave you. No ifs, ands, or buts. No maybes, I'll be gone. When I found out about her, I googled her, and here she is on Pinterest posting all of these things about baby, his last name. She was three months pregnant with my husband's child. She was three months pregnant with my husband's child. Then they had another child a year later. So he became a dad at 46, and I'll never have that opportunity to have my own child. The last one is, is such a common thing that you hear where somebody says, a man says, I don't ever want to have children, and a woman goes with that for him, and then he clears off and has children with, with someone else. So talk about this one, Tracy. This is, I think this is really upsetting. Oh, it, it's the worst. I mean, and that's a tangible cost. Like when people talk about infidelity and like, you know, it's victimless crime. And, you know, if you're watching this Netflix thing, it's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. That one drove me crazy. Like as if there aren't any costs. And I think for women, especially if you're of childbearing years, they're wasting your fertility. I mean, in a case like this where someone's making, you're investing in a false sense. You're like, okay, well, if I have a future with this person and we're jointly making this decision and we're not going to have kids and I'm kind of trading some, perhaps something I want for the longevity and the meaningfulness of this relationship. And then you find out, you give them those years and then poof, they, they take off and they're gone. I mean, yeah, fuck them very much. It, it, it's, a, it's a cost that only women bear. I, to me, that's personal. Like when I went through this, it was really my, um, it, I was in my late, 30s. I was 38 when I met my cheating ex, and I was 39 when I got married, and 40 when I had my D-Day. I mean, that was the end of my child rearing, right? So I lost my last chance to really have a kid on the, on a fuckwit. So yeah, fuck him. That's terrible. You and you can't get that back. You can't rewind, and you know, and, and this uh, finding out that. You can't have the children, with, and he's doing. He after years of being adamant that he won't have children, he goes off and does it with someone else. Yeah. I've heard that over and over again. It's such a common thing. Yeah, no, it is, and yeah, 
Well, I mean, they're liars, right? He doesn't want to. Fa- now, that's different to say, will he be an involved father? Does he really care? I mean, maybe for him, the price of admission to get schmoopy or, you know, or maybe he got her knocked up, you know, is he'll have a kid. Now, whether that he's a concerned and loving parent is a whole other thing. And really, you don't want to, as we both know from painful experience, you do not want a child with a fuckwit. We love our children, but, you know, I wish they had better parents. But, I, you know, my heart goes out to her. And, and I would say, if you want to be a mom, a lot of kids in the world, it's adoption, there's other things. But not having your own child, that hurts. It really hurts a lot. So that's not a very happy note to end it on. Do you have any thoughts? I think um, when we look at what he or she will do or give to the person that they would never have uh, done to you, it's it's all image management. It's all about them. It's not about the affair partner. It's all about doing something for what they can get out of it. And that never changes. It may look good on the outside. It may look like they're getting something that you weren't getting, but there's a price to pay. and their their character doesn't change yeah trust they're, that they suck fundamentally be selfish and self-absorbed and they're not going to change and it's not worth being involved in a relationship for that for a few few, few shiny things and he, look even if they do change it's not outside the laws of physics but even if they do they were shitty to you and that's enough i mean you can't unring that bell trust that they suck that's my advice that wraps another episode of Tell Me How You're Mighty. If you want to leave us a mighty story or a fuckwit of the week submission? Check out our new website, tellmehowyourmighty.com. That's your spelt Y-O-U-R-E. We've got all the episodes, show notes, links to our guests, and you can see the tea room where Sarah and I first met. If you enjoyed this episode, please review the podcast and follow us. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>